so welcome everyone back to the class on tribology uh, so in the last class we were just dealing about some basic fundamental concepts of uh, friction and also we dealt about what are its classifications related to static and dynamic and again sub classifications of dynamic uh, friction we came into related to sliding or rolling or pivot type of things and later also we studied when the friction will be desirable and when it will not be desirable so you have the applications where it is feasible and not feasible also so we dealt about that as well and later we just uh, spoke about various uh, parameters of friction such as limiting frictional factor coefficient of friction angle of repose all those stuffs we just brushed up related to our frictional fundamentals of friction and we also took a small example of uh, stainless steel how to identify the coefficient of friction based on the requirement and after your requirement you will substantiate some value then you will check up with your gear design handbook and see where the mapping of the cof value is lying so based on that we do identify the required cof for particular material for particular application so we had dealt until here in the last class and so basically evaluating or determining a coefficient of friction for a particular material for particular application is little bit complicated why because you have to focus on surface roughness surface roughness plays a vital role not only the surface roughness the grade of the lubricant what you are using even that plays a vital role and also the chemistry of the surface which is in coming in contact it purely depends upon the material and the its characteristics how it get interfaced at the minimum contact point and due to this contact some stresses will be generated so even the contact stresses across the rolling or uh, yeah, moving component also will affect in evaluating the coefficient of friction along with that even the geometry of the given component also plays a vital role not only these things also the external environment in which this machine components are placed for operation also plays a vital role along with that even the temperature temperature anyhow it is associated either with the room temperature or yeah, more than the room temperature also so all these are the parameters which will be directly and some indirectly which will be affecting the coefficient of friction of an given machine component so looking it looks as though it is a very complicated one to evaluate the coefficient of friction of an given material when it is subjected to some sliding or rolling moment but it is also a very relatively easy way to measure okay so if you measure it under the right conditions if you don't measure under the right conditions again you will be held up with some abnormal cof value and then the need of the fulfillment of reduced wear and friction cannot be achieved if your cof value is not right so you have to use the right method at right time in right condition then you can easily evaluate the normal and the frictional load associated with any moving machine components so these are all the basic fundamentals what we have studied until now related to your part of friction in module 2 so once you are thorough with the background prerequisite concept of friction in your syllabus you have some frictional theories which are been put forward to overcome this adhesion deformation kind of frictional characteristics okay so before starting with that there are few researchers who have started with the evaluation of the friction and commented on some major changes so i'm not telling you the entire history i'm just shooting out with single bullets okay so related to the part of the history what they have commented so you have to know some key points in it so one of the researcher by amontons he told that friction usually arise across the surface where you don't have a smooth surface means wherever you have a high rough surface there the friction arises so he justified his statement in that way but later there was one more like researcher who 
justified saying that even in the friction got increased even where you had a surface which was very much smoother right so he told that the statement done by amanton is not right he justified by showing even the friction enhances across a smooth surface and later he substantiated it by showing that the friction mainly are affected due to the area of adhesion with the contact zone you know that you will be having two rolling components your moving components so the adhesion between the two components so the area of adhesion at that particular contact will only affect the frictional f a thing not whether the surface is smooth or rough anyhow it is rolling the surface could be smooth or rough but along with that the area of adhesion also plays a vital role and it is a major reason behind reducing your enhancing the frictional effect so he justified in this way later the person coulomb who is more familiar for his dry friction concept he considered that the possibility of adhesion is a significant contribution but along with that you should consider the stresses which come across the interlocking of the asperites of two surfaces see you have the contact between the two machine components so those contacts are affected by the area of adhesion so this asperites are nothing but the surfaces which are in contact and a proper interlocking in between these asperites when movement will be released with the help of some amount of stresses due to the applied load or the pressure so he is telling that along with the adhesion you have to consider the significant contribution due to the stresses which come across the interlocking of the asperites when it is moving so because you will be having a small interlocking system which helps to slide your move in contact so across that interlocking contact the stress will be generated right so this stress along with the adhesion area will play a vital role for the friction so he justified his statement in this way and one more person called uh, leohard euler he just added some uh, useful points to it saying that he believed that when you have an interlocking of asperites right so he told that the rigid interlocking of the asperites will will be the right name to show the significant or the effect of friction when the body is in movement it cannot be an semi rigid or in soft interlocking between the asperites if you want to move the machine components for a longer run either sliding or rolling and as it should be an rigid interlocking of asperites he added this statement and he justified by making a model also and he was the person who introduced the word coefficient of friction so usually in the theories the coefficient of friction is been represented by the symbol m so leoard euler is the person who invented the term coefficient of friction with a symbol m so based on that concept so if you just assume the asperites is in triangular position in contact then the slope q if you in, uh, uh, in a triangular shape and if you consider the slope as q then the coefficient of friction could be given as an angle associated with that slope q which will be written as m is equal to tan q okay so in the place of angle theta so we will be taking the slope value of q when it is an acute angle triangle then only you can consider m is equal to tan q where the hypotenuse will be the slope which will be equal to q so this is a per, related to the coefficient of friction so whatever might be the concepts put forward by many researchers along with that the basic understanding of the geometry of the given surface is very much essential to know the interaction between the opposite asperites because you'll be having two surfaces which will be moving opposite to the each other and you will be having two surfaces which are in opposite direction so the interaction between the two opposite asperites in the given geometry should be understood well 
So if you have a proper understanding in between the interactions of the op of the aspirates in opposite direction, then it will be easily able for you to evaluate what is the amount of energy dissipated during the interaction of these aspirates. And this amount of energy dissipated during the interface of this aspirates will be always equal to the product of frictional force and the sliding velocity because the machine component will be sliding or rolling. Along with that, the frictional force comes into picture. So this dissipated energy comes only due to the frictional force. If there were no frictional force, then the amount of energy dissipated would be negligible or zero. So this energy dissipated mainly depends upon the frictional force, which is coming into picture when you have the two machine components, which is sliding or rolling with respect to the contact point. So these were some statements which was put forward by various researchers right from the evaluation of the concept of friction. So we were telling about the asperity interaction which come across in between the rolling components. So this asperity in interaction plays a vital role. Okay, so this asperity in interaction comes in two types. One is the adhesion and other one is the deformation. So adhesion means you will be having some bonding in between the two surface which rotates. And due to that bonding, the, the, some amount of frictional force also comes into picture. And sometimes there won't be bonding. Only due to the movement, there'll be some deformation across the contact surface. In both the thing, there'll be some asperity interaction between the rolling components. So you have to understand the concept of adhesion and the deformation which come across for a moving machine component. So in order to reduce the friction, we use a lubrication thin film to overcome all these in interactions that we will study further. So you should know about these two interactions. One is the adhesion and the deformation. So when the adhesion come across, suppose you have the two surfaces, which are in contact and having some movement, either sliding or rolling, okay? So across the contact, you will be having the frictional force only across the peaks of the aspirates. Peaks of the aspirates means you will be having the two rolling components. So it might be connected only across the two peaks, right? So the area of the contact at this position you will be having the maximum amount of frictional force and that will be directly dependable upon the area of contact and this area of contact usually will be very less than that of the nominal area of the entire aspirant surface so across this surface a high amount of pressure will be subjected due to the real contact so due to high pressure at this particular point, there will be some amount of uh, atoms on the surface which will be having very close proximity to each other. So these atoms across the surface which are closely packed will be having some interactions in between the contact areas. So this helps in having a proper addition between the two components. It again depends upon the type of the material you are using. All the material could not be having the adhesion property. Some might adhere and some doesn't adhere, okay? So it mainly depends upon the properties of the element what you are using. It has the adhesion capability, then it helps to have this type of characteristics. So this adhesion property comes across only across a point of contact, which will be very small than that of the nominal area. So at that contact, at that contact area, the pressure will be very high due to rubbing of the or the rolling of the surfaces. So at that contact, what happens there will be a proper adhesion between two components, but still it is revolving in opposite direction, the frictional force comes into picture. So this is about the adhesion. Apart from that, you have one more characteristics. You are familiar with the word deformation. So if there is no adhesion at all in between the surfaces which are coming in contact, 
then you have just the frictional resistance which comes across due to the deformation of the material again the material what you are using might be soft might means might be rigid a yeah, semi rigid right so it depends and you and it does not have any adhesion property to adhere to each other even at the contact point then what happens only the material across the surface can undergo deformation due to continuous sliding yeah rolling so the frictional resistance which uh, gets comes into picture due to the rolling movement can be only attributed due to the deformation of the material okay and the amount of displacement which will be uh, coming into picture could be evaluated in its relative motion so one is mainly due to deformation of the material at the contact surface and the other one is the pressure which is high at the contact uh, point and it has a capability to adhere to each other so when it adheres to each other it has an interlocking system okay so when it is having a interlocking system also friction comes into picture when it does not have an capability of interlocking system because it doesn't have adhesion but still the frictional resistance comes only across the surface whether it is deformed or displayed whatever based on the amount of pressure applied to it so these are the two type of asperity interactions which come across when the body is having relative movement with respect to each other either through sliding or rolling so this deformation interaction again will be of two types one is that microscopic interaction which is limited only to the asperites means only across the contact area second one is the macroscopic interaction which involves plowing of the bulk materials so plowing is also one more category what you have to understand i'll explain this in your depth so the uh, these are two interactions related to deformation one is the microscopic interaction what we are now studying with respect to asperites it is associated only with the asperites across the contact when moving the machine components second one deformation across occurs in the whole bulk material you will be having the entire bulk material where you apply the load the entire body gets deformed due to the stress and the strain induced in it so this come across during the plowing part of it what we will be dealing further but related to asperites only microscopic interaction comes into picture which cannot be visualized directly by our human eye but we can understand by evaluating the amount of stress induced and the strain and the amount of frictional value and the frictional resistance offered by the machine components while moving so these are the two categories what you have to understand related to the asperite interactions in a rolling component before going to the theory and last two points what you have to understand is the magnitude of any contribution which is providing on the rolling component mainly depends upon magnitude of contribution here in this is it is nothing but the magnitude amount of the frictional resistance which has been offered by and given uh, by two revolving components is mainly due to the surface roughness and what is the hardness of the material also it depends upon the shape the size and other wear particles associated with it so related to wear we will deal further but overall all these factors contribute on showing what is the frictional resistance and its parameters like coefficient of friction your limiting frictional force all these stuffs depends upon these characteristics one is the surface roughness the hardness of the material what is the shape of the given component what is the size of the given component and even the area of contact between the revolving elements so all this plays a vital role and hence we can say the friction coefficient always varies widely with respect to its magnitude depending mainly upon its material and condition in what condition the component is kept at room temperature or high temperature and also the set of material properties through which the machine component is builded so mainly the coefficient of friction depends upon all these values okay so if you have properly tailored your material 
uh, your device with respect to these properties then you can substantiate theoretically this could be the coefficient of, of friction value and when you operate and check the theoretical value should map with that of your experimental one that shows that you have substantiated your theoretical model well in comparison to that of experimental so these are the some key points of researchers and some basic prerequisite concepts what you have to know related to the terminologies and concepts uh, how the frictional thing is useful in understanding okay so after knowing some uh, background part there are two to three frictional theories in your syllabus what you have to understand so the first frictional theory was given by bordern and tambers tables so it is based on simple addition theory so based on simple addition theory he has put forward some terminologies and some concepts what you have to understand so you know now what do you mean by an addition so based on the addition theory he has uh recognize some key terms so that you should know so let us start with the bordern and tabers type of theory concept so here basically you will consider the two surfaces which are subjected to some loading condition okay so when it is subjected to some lo loading condition it comes into contact so this contact when subjected to loading condition when the uh, component is in moving what happens is across the contact the aspirate peak will be high means the pressure will be high and there the frictional force also comes into picture and this area will be across only the area of contact which will be very less than that of the nominal area that this we have studied already in the previous slide okay so across this particular point the pressure will be very high so this asperity which is very high will be more in case of soft material so if it is a soft material it gets deformed easily at plastic stage so when you have the variations in the pressure so you'll be having some variation across the stress applied and the strain generated also if it is a soft material it easily get deformed at the plastic stage where it cannot come back so one thing you have to see whether the material what you are using is soft or hard so hardness will speak everything if it is a good hardness value material then it won't get deformed easily right if it is a soft material what you are using as an uh, material for the machining component so when you have high pressure across the real contact when the material is been rotating or sliding so since the pressure is high at only at the contact point since the material is made up of soft material it gets easily deformed at the plastic stage and it causes the total contact area to grow so there will be some deformation some change in shape and there will be some half a sad amount of uh, geometrical nature which is coming across towards the area where it is been deformed so you will be having a slight grow of the area across the contact area suppose if you have a small gap across the contact area which has been interlocked and rotating or sliding due to the small deformation i told deformation will be at microscopic level okay uh, so the, due to the small amount of grow the amount of contact area will grow so when the contact area across the material will grow what happens you have to understand and this growth of the contact area due to the deformation can take place due to two reasons one is one by the growth of the individual contact spot and the second one is the initiation of a new contact so you have a proper interlocking system and the component has been revolving so when the material gets deformed you will be having a little bit more growth across one of the surface so you will be having some good contacts across the individual contact points okay second one is due to the growth suppose if you had contact between suppose you had an interlocking system between two uh, ends here and if the growth has come across in the next part so the extra growth which is formed in adjacent to the interlocking system will provide an initiation to get a new contact 
so you had a contact across this distance from here till here so due to extra gore the amount of length of contact between the two mechanical components will be increased so these are the two possibilities one to extend the contact spot or to get a new contact due to the growth so it mainly depends upon the amount of the growth of the material due to deformation across the contact area and this process continues until the total real area of contact is sufficient enough to bear the load elastically again it should not deform right so when it is subjected to some load or the pressure so the amount of contact area which is needed to bear this load at the elastic level should be achieved so this process goes on until the required area of contact which is needed to substantiate the load across the elastic stage is reached so this were the few things told by borden okay so based on that he just derived a small equation okay for an elastics if it is a material which has its elastic nature as well as the plasticity so within the load bearing capacity it will be within the elastic limit if once it is not bearable then it gets deformed and goes for the plastic stage so for a material which has both elastic and plastic plasticity nature in it the normal load bearing capacity for the material will be given as a into p not so this was been derived by this particular person borden and taber so here he told a is nothing but the real area of the contact between the two moving components so i told the area will be very negligible very small right so this is the amount of area of contact across it he substantiated some amount of pressure which is yielded due to this area of contact so that yielded pressure was given as p not this specifically he is stressing only for softer material remember only in softer material you can have the nature of both elastic as well as the plastic because it gets easily deformed right so in case of softer material the amount of yielded pressure across the particular area of contact will be equal to the normal load bearing capacity okay so he also substantiated it with the hardness value the p not will be the yield pressure of an soft material and this p not which is the yield pressure he justified that it will be very near to that of the hardness of that material so he told he can map the yield pressure of the soft material to the hardness of that particular soft material and hence he replaced the equation w is equal to a into p not by w is equal to a times the hardness value of it so is this clear hello am i going a little bit fast is it understandable kindly respond are you people there yes ma'am yeah be little louder why today the strength is low only 17 students what about the others without understanding how we will proceed further I'm a bit fast. Okay, let me go a little bit slow. No problem. Thank you. At least you should inform. So this is how the area. Uh, so this was the thing what he explained related to the mechanical components, which is made by the softer material. So W, the weight bearing capacity, will be equal to the amount of area contact into the yield pressure across that particular contact area and he justified that the yield pressure of the soft material will be equally equal to that of the hardness and very near to it and hence he replaced the yield pressure by the word hardness associated to that particular material so this was the equation what he derived for the normal load for the given soft material 
then further he spoke about the plastic deformations so when the plastic deformation becomes very severe it could be at the medium level deformation or very severe so when it is in very severe condition what happens the asperity junctions get cold welded Asperity junction is nothing but the area across the contact in which the two mechanical components are sliding. So, when due to plastic deformation becomes very severe, so across the junction, what happens? It get cold welded, and as a result, due to cold welded, means it is many part of the material across the contacts are deforming. so when deforming it is providing a good adhesion bonds between the two surface across the junction so this will be possible to get fused between each other by means of cold welded concept so when this happens there will be a strong adhesive bond across the rolling components particularly across the area of contact means to say across the asperity junctions so due to this good adhesive bond you will be some the force required to cause the shear failure of the asperity junction he derived okay because you need some force in order to make this asperity junction get failed due to shear so this shear failure happens across a strong adhesive bond when the given two components you are sliding you are rolling in an longer period of time first thing he is using a soft material second thing due to the high load or the pressure the material is deformed due to material deformation at the severe condition it is having a proper adhesive bond when you have a strong adhesive bond it is difficult for the mechanical components to revolve against each other to get the required sliding motion if you need that you should be having a strong shear failure for that you need some force to cause a shear failure across the asperity junction and this shear failure or the frictional force which is needed for adhesion is given by the equation a into s okay so here a will be again the real area of the contact and s will be nothing but the shear strength of the soft material so it also again depends upon what is the property of that particular material with respect to various physical characteristics so the s here substantiate for the value shear strength of that particular soft material so with this concepts he told that the coefficient of friction due to adhesion might be written in this way so the coefficient of friction you know it is represented by the letter mu so mu uh, and it is written here as adh this is nothing but the coefficient of friction due to adhesion so this will be equal to the frictional force due to adhesion divided by the normal load so w is the normal load minus the shear strength value divided upon the hardness of the soft material so he derived with a small equation how to determine the coefficient of friction due to adhesion when it is subjected to an soft material so if they ask you to explain the frictional theory related to bordens and taber so you should substantiate the concept of adhesion so how the contact area grows so when the contact area grows and it is subjected to some amount of pressure how you evaluate the normal load and later how the yield pressure will be mapped to that of the hardness so this is at the normal plastic deformation so when the deformation becomes severe a strong adhesive bonds are formed and to overcome the strong adhesive bond you need some frictional force so how you evaluate the frictional force along the same contact area so in that thing the shear strength comes into picture so using these two equation concept later 
he derived the coefficient of friction equation in this way so it will be the addition of the frictional it will be it will be the frictional force due to addition divided upon the normal load minus the shear strength value of the soft material divided by the hardness of the soft material so in most of the cases okay so what happens is the frictional value will be always less than or yeah, equal to 0.2 and hence this theory predicts a value of friction coefficient as 0.2 and almost for all the materials even he justified that the shear strength upon the hardness value remains the same since this remains the same the value of coefficient of friction for any metals will yield below or yeah, equal to 0.2 so this theory bordon's theory of friction predicted that the coefficient of friction value will be as 0.2 so this was the main conclusion of bordon and taber related to the frictional theory for soft material when it is in movement either through rolling or sliding is that clear hello Kindly speak on. Are you people there? Hello. Okay. Ishant is saying yes, ma'am. Kindly be interactive. Then only the class will be interesting. So this theory had some advantages and it concluded some values. But apart from that, it had some drawbacks also. so what were the drawbacks of this theory basically this theory seemed to be attractive and very simple but it had some inadvertencies related to its theory so what was it the frictional coefficient in this model mainly depends on the properties of the soft material only okay so this is one of the drawback it is not focusing on any general material like it could be a rigid material a semi rigid material or a soft material no it is only focusing on the soft material where you won't be having more deviation or more broadness for the use of material we cannot use only soft material for all the purpose you need some kind of rigid material and some kind of semi rigid material also in that case this theory will not be applicable as it is focusing only related to softer material only and second thing is under normal atmospheric conditions the actual value of the friction coefficient when two metals comes in contact are usually found in the way value of 0.5 but theoretically it was predicted as 0.2 the thing which was experimented practically always i told you the theoretically what you model and evaluate will be justified only when you do it experimentally so the person borden justified theoretically that the coefficient of friction for any soft material is 0.2 it's less than or equal to 0.2 it won't increase but when the same thing was tried experimentally subjecting under the normal atmospheric condition it was observed that the coefficient of friction value came near to 0.5 which was slightly uh, higher than that of the predicted theory so there was some flaws or yeah, some of errors which has to be fine tuned to get and right theoretical and the experimental value when both the theoretical and experimental value gets mapped then only you can justify the theoretical approach what you have developed is the same if it finds more deviation then it shows that it has some inadequacy some flaws some lacuna which has to be clarified so this was a second thing as an flaw which came into the theory of borden and thirdly it was seen the frictional coefficients are seem to be much higher than the predicted by this theory even more than unity 
sometimes even the frictional coefficients which was evaluated was more than unity it as per this theory the frictional coefficient of friction cannot go more than unity with respect to whatever the type of material you are selecting and sometimes it was seen that when it was calculated experimentally based on this theoretical approach the value of the coefficient of friction crossed even unity which is again a big drawback so finally and last thing is in simple addition theory of friction the material is assumed to have a constant value of flow stress so usually what happens in a simple addition theory when you have a proper addition and interlocking bonding between the two mechanical components which are sliding or revolving the material was always assumed to have a constant value of the flow stress which will not be possible in all the cases and hence there were a need to change or modify the existing bordon theory of friction why because it has to focus on harder materials also and it should see that experimental value is mapping with that of the theoretical value and thirdly no coefficient of friction could be higher than unity and always we cannot assume a continuous flow of stress across the contact area and hence these things were need to be justified by doing some corrections ya yeah, modifications and hence this addition theory of bordon was modified ya yeah, fine tuned little bit by means of the concept of junction growth okay so what's happening here basically in the junction growth so the drawbacks of the simple addition theory led to the development of modified addition theory so professor borden and taber they reexamined the theory and modified considering the combined effect of normal and shear stress so here they didn't had the normal and the shear stress just the what they observed what they uh added in the concept is it will be having a constant value of stress right so now they bifurcated the stress which has been applied into the body as the normal and the shear stress okay so always the shear stress will be tangential to the given body so they tried to add this normal and shear stress concept into it i hope you people have studied the more circle which came in your uh, subject called some strength of materials ya mechanics of materials right which helps in evaluating various planes stresses and it also helps in providing you the relation between the normal stress and the shear stress so similarly the same concept was been applied here with the terminology of mohr circle which provides some importance and justification for the junction growth okay the same concept what you have studied so even the som comes into picture your lubrication friction wear so you can see how different subjects together is combining to fulfill the needs and requirement of your subject tribology so it is nothing much as you need to understand a new concept so you need to know how to correlate the subjects what you have studied already so that you can get an uh, beautiful concept of solving nature related to any needs of a subject tribology okay so this borden and taber now they reexamined their theory themselves it is not like someone else came and modified so they identified the lacunas the problems which are there the drawbacks so they reexamined the theory what they have evaluated so then they modified by considering some concepts what is that they combine the effect of both the normal and the shear stress which comes into picture when the mechanical component is either sliding or rolling so previously in the earlier cases the effects of the normal and tangential loads were considered separately by these researchers so now they combine these two together 
so it was considered that the normal load determined the real area of contact and to shear over this area the tangential force was needed so now they wanted to club together so they told that the normal because they have considered it separately before only the real area of contact the normal load was determined only based on the real area of the contact and based on how the shear is coming across the area was substantiated by the tangential force hello someone wanted to speak something okay so basically they considered these two separately but in fact what happens you have to understand the true contact area must be much greater than the predicted by the normal load alone so what do you mean by this the true contact area which is the actual contact area between the moving components must be greater than that of the predicted normal load okay so you know the area in which the contact comes into when the moving component is rotating so the true contact of area what you justify should be always be greater than the amount of load bearing capacity of that moving component so if the true contact area is not greater enough in order to substantiate that load or pressure while revolving so then it get easily deformed and it results in the growth and extending the area of contact in some cases this adhesion bond could be useful and in some it might not be useful so while designing the machine components for rolling or sliding uh, function you should see and predict a little bit more broader contact area such that it is feasible enough to bear for a range of normal load which could be subjected across a contact area so this one thing they have to keep in mind so based on that you should understand what is junction growth uh, and then only the theory starts approaching so this junction growth is associated with the mohr circle that i will do it in the next class as it is already 10 23 so if i start again it takes like 5 uh, 10 minutes to complete the junction group so currently i just stop presenting here if you have any doubts you please ask me if i still need to be very slow also i am happy to do that any doubts any questions so today we just dealt about the various people how they explained the history of uh, our friction in their own terminologies and later we spoke about the friction theory which came forward by bodden and taber and it was quite interesting and it had little bit of drawbacks so those drawbacks will be now overcome by the concept of junction growth so you will be having the modified adhesion theory for friction so that we'll be doing in the next class so now i take the attendance and after that uh, i have posted an quiz in the google classroom see that you will attend the quiz within the break and submit it on time akil kv please answer your roll call akil kv Akil K V, you're there. You're not responding, Mr. Akil K V. Anil Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Gautam uh, Krishna. Yes, ma'am. Ankesh Aman. Ankesh Aman is absent. Balaji B R. Balaji V R is absent. Bildar Muhammad. Present, ma'am. Okay. Chaitanya S R. Present, ma'am. Chetan Kumar. Okay. 
धीरज सी एन एस मैम ईशांत ओके हर्षित एस एस मैम हिमांका एब्सेंट कनिष्का रेड्डी यस मैम नागमुरली कृष्णा श्री नागमुरली कृष्णा एब्सेंट कुनाल राज कुनाल राज धनुष इज धनुष एंड मोहम्मद आई एन अटेंडिंग एनी अदर क्लासेस हेलो If he is attending, kindly at least post a message if you are not able to speak up, because he hasn't attended any single class. The notion, Muhammad Ayan, Muhammad Junaid, Muhammad Junaid, okay, Muhammad Junaid, even is absent. Shri Prasad, Shri Prasad. In the meantime, those who have taken the attendance can take the quiz. Shri Prasad, Nihari ka present, ma'am. Nihar Venkat Sai absent. Nikhilar, Nikhil, Nirab, Nirab. प्रज्वल पाटिल प्रज्वल पाटिल एब्सेंट प्रज्वल एस बट ऋषभ पांडे रोहन रोशन रोशन यादव एब्सेंट सुमंत सागर सुमंत सागर सागर दत्ता सागर एब्सेंट सागर जीवी प्रेजेंट मैम संजय राघव संजय राघव शोभित शोभित सिद्धार्थ बी सिद्धार्थ बी सिद्धार्थ श्रीधर both the siddharth sir absent today subramanya subramanya why so many absentees today tirumana seti rohan yes ma'am yeah ulas you ulas you ulas Others also type your name and your son in the chat room. Vidyan Prakash, Vidyan. Present ma'am. Okay, Varun, Varun, Pawan. Present ma'am. Okay, Danush. Sixteen M E zero six four Danush. ज्ञानेश कुमार ज्ञानेश कुमार गुणसागर मेघनाथ प्रसाद मेघनाथ प्रसाद रसिक बरण रसिक बरण शिव कृष्ण ओके Shreyas, Shreyas L, Shrini Vasulu, Yoga Nanda, Yoga Nanda, Kiranar, Shiva Krishna, Gautam Sai. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Shiva Krishna. Okay, 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 okay. गौतम साई गौतम साई इफ आई हैव मिस्ड एनी वन नेम काइंडली लेट मी नो सी दैट यू हैव रिटर्न योर नेम एंड यूर सन इन द चैट 
so see that you will submit the quiz before your tea break before your other session class so until next week please be safe take care have a nice day thank you